Okay. Hello, I'm Troy Cochran, and today I'm going to be refuting the claim that excessive television viewing has caused the steady increase of childhood obesity. Now, my opponent's secondary claim was that television viewing is a contributing factor to childhood obesity because it may take away from the children from the time that children have for physical activities, and the second claim that children are influenced to make unhealthy food choices through exposure to food advertisements. Now, my response to the first claim is that I feel that the first claim takes away from the major claim because it is a very passive statement. It is not declarative like the major claim is, where excessive television is causing an increase in childhood obesity. The secondary claim states that it is a contributing factor and that it may take away time from uh, kids, the time that they have for physical activities. And that passiveness takes away from the major claim. Also, from the Kaiser Family Foundation, the same, uh, the same source that my opponent used, they stated that kids spend 7.5 hours on entertainment media every day. Now, while that, state, while that statistic is true, it's slightly misleading because children spend 4.5 hours a day watching television, which the major claim is that excessive television causes an increase in childhood obesity. Now, this is an increase from 40 minutes since 1999, and this amount of time still leaves time for physical activities. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, only 60 minutes of aerobic activities are recommended every day for children from ages 8 to 18. So four and a half hours a day of TV, while that is an excessive amount and it shouldn't be that high, it still allows kids time to go play outside for an hour. It's not unreasonable and they're not mutually exclusive. Now my response to the second claim, the second claim being, Children are influenced to make unhealthy food choices through exposure to food advertisements. Children are very, you can influence children very easily. And so advertisers use television as a medium to, uh, they use it as a medium to influence kids to make choices that are questionable at best. Now, the problem with this is that access to unhealthy foods Children are largely dependent on outside sources to get these foods. Now, as a kid, my parents made food at night for me for dinner. And at lunch, my parents made my lunch. So I was largely dependent on what they made for me. So it was not my decision on what I ate as much as it was theirs. Now, I had my preferences and what I liked, but it was my mom going to the grocery store and buying the food, whether it was unhealthy or healthy. Now, children need their parents or others to get the food. They can't get it on their own. And the age group, ages 8 to 18, you can only start driving at age 16. So, I mean, you can really only start getting your own food and really making your own choices once you start getting older. And um, also, another contributing factor to unhealthy foods is that schools are still serving unhealthy foods. Now, uh, according to the, uh, back to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, more than half of middle and high schools offer sugary drinks and less, less healthy foods. Now, while TV may influence kids to eat the unhealthy foods, it still needs to be provided to them, and that's what middle that's what more than half of middle and high schools are doing. They're giving kids the opportunity to make bad choices. And also, healthy foods are more expensive. Now, kids who grew up in a poor area, their parents might have not been able to afford healthy foods for them. And it just comes down to what way can I put food on the table? And it would turn out that cheaper foods are less healthy. Now, the what I want to say at the end is that ex excessive anything is bad. Excessive television for children is not good. It should be within moderation. But excessive television has not caused the steady increase of, ob of childhood obesity. It has contributed, but the main reason is that parents need to control what their kids are eating and show them how to, have, uh, how to live a healthy lifestyle. Thank you.
All right, Troy, all of the structural stuff is fine. You've got a clear identification of the proposition. The secondary points, as you get to the first point, you label it very effectively. I think that's okay. I, I did think that it was a good idea to kind of challenge the uh, premise of between the difference uh, in the first supporting point and what you think the main proposition is, that it's gone from being a causal argument to a contributory argument to being an argument that says may. And in essence, having reduced the amount of dispute there is on the issue, they may have, in fact, eliminated whether or not there's any controversy on it. I don't think there's any doubt that fast foods contribute to you know, food consumption you know, or to weight. The question is, is the television watching the main contributor to that? I thought you had a reasonable challenge on the first point or on this first point when you talk about the number of hours that are available. You could point out, for instance, how much time kids have inside of school to do exercise. You could point out after school how much time there is before it gets dark, before they'd have to have bedtime. So that 4.5 hours that you mentioned could be put into a little bit more context. And by the way, I do think that uh, the same argument that you make about uh, who's choosing the food could be talked about who's you know, controlling the activity because uh, kids are not buying their own video games and they're not paying for their own cable and they're not you know, uh, getting their own internet connection. Uh, the parents are making those decisions. So I think the same argument that you're making on the other point could be made on this particular point. I did like the idea that you need 60 minutes a day in order to be physically in good shape of exercise. I think there's probably a good demonstration possible here if you followed up that said that most of the schools require uh, at least a certain amount of physical activity every day and so it's quite possible that that 60 minutes is being uh, achieved uh, in the schools without even having to think about what they're doing after school. So that, that could be developed a little bit more. The second point uh, you label very clearly as you get to it. I think you explain the premise here pretty reasonably. Some data would be helpful on uh, this particular point. I don't remember what the data was that the ad advocate offered in this situation and so without any data on your own and without contrasting it to what the advocate said it pretty much is uh you know, well, this is, these are my assertions, and do they sound reasonable? And they sound pretty reasonable in the context of the argument, though. More clarity would be helpful. Uh, the argument about the schools and what they serve, I thought, was a little bit stronger, uh, suggesting that there are other sources where they could be getting all of these foods that are not particularly nutritious for them. Uh, I think that argument could be developed a little bit more, but you did have at least some information to suggest that point. All right, thank you.